Let's look at some scripture and then I'll, I'll come back. That sound good? So, starting, I'm going to go fast. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Do you know you have a choice what goes in your heart? The Bible says the mouth out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Do you know what gets in your heart? What's in your mind? What you meditate on goes in your heart. Then it stews and goes around in there. And then you make your decisions upon life on it. And then if you want to know what someone really believes, uh, don't listen to the canned statement they told you. Just sit around and talk for a little while and they will put it out there. Big smile. So, you know, it's kind of like reputation and character. Reputation is what you want everybody to think about your character so you really are. And if you'll spend more time working on your character, you won't have to care, you won't really care about your reputation. As long as you know who you are and God knows who you are, that's all that matters. Amen. So every issue of life flows out of your heart. For out of, the, out of it are the issues of life. So every issue. Why does my heart matter? Why does it matter what, how I act and what I do? Because every, come on, every issue of life, everything you deal with started in your heart. Amen. It makes or breaks with what you let in. That's why our overcomers, we teach negative heart conditions and then we teach positive heart conditions. There are certain heart conditions you need to learn to close. But I mean, until you know who you are in Christ, a lot of times those negative heart conditions, like the cares, can overwhelm you because you don't know the truth of the word about really knowing who you are in Christ. When you know that you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, you know 2 Corinthians 5 says you're a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. Build all things have become new. Then you quit letting the devil tell you, well, you know, you know it's just like people get up saying, hey, I'm an addict. Hey, I'm an alcoholic. Man, are you going to speak curses over your life continually? Or are you going to stand up and say, hey, I'm a new king of God. I was once I was once bound by those things, but God set me free. Yes, I'm learning to walk it out, but I, I'm a free man from that. Either the word's all true or not true, but the devil's real tricky. He don't care if people start to... He, see, he, he loves them. A lot of people, hey, 20 or 30 years, they never experienced the peace and joy of God. They just battled with demons instead of learning to be set free from them because they don't know the truth of the word and know they can be free. Did I say there was anything wrong? A lot of them were founded on biblical principles. I didn't. I'm not ever back talking those things or trash talking. I'm just telling you, listen, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Either you're all new creature or you're not a new creature. Either by his stripes you were healed or he's a liar. Well, I've got sickness. Yeah, the devil brought it to you. He also will try to bring back your addictions and knock on your door, but he has no authority. When Jesus went down to hell, he made a show openly over Satan, right? Trampled over all principalities, power, spiritual wickedness, right? Uh, it took all, every sickness, every disease, everything we had, he made a show. Does he have to go and do that again? Then he left, he, he, left, he left captivity captive and he gave authority under men. God is waiting for you to put the authority that he gave you as a believer into practice and start speaking it out. But, which brings me to my point to some of you. Some of you need to learn to just start doing that. Come on, can I get an amen? Amen. But then some of you have been going for a little while. You've been walking through some things. And guess what happens when we're in this world? Eventually, cares start to pile up upon us. We care about our kids. We care about our jobs. And then we care about our nation. You know, and if you listen, listen if you listen to the news, I'm just going to tell you now, turn that trash off. As your pastor, I'm not telling you not to stay informed, but, but find a way to do it in moderation. If you listen to that stuff all the time, you're going to be so worked up, you're not going to be no good to nobody. They have got it down to psycho babble, and you don't know which side to trust, so just listen to the Holy Ghost. It's a mind assault on both sides. Just telling you what I believe from the Word of God. All right, so we got to keep our heart. Every issue flows out of it, right? So, the cares choke the life of the Word, which steals the Zoe life. See, your cares will choke 
the word. We'll say it again because it's a really big point. Your cares, if you let them grow, will choke the word of God. And you will find yourself struggling to stand on the truth. And we all do that. We all have found ourselves there. There's not one person here that's never not found themselves where the cares of this world have not started to affect them. That's why he told us, which I'm going to get to that verse in a moment, to cast all our cares upon him, for he careth for us. Now, did he say, I'll come take your cares away? Everybody wants Jesus to be like cow God. <laughs> Only the old people get that song. Take me away. Cow God, come take me away. Yeah. There you for you millennials or whatever. But we have to give it to him. Mark 4 1. Mark 4 1. And he began to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude. So he entered to his ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. He taught them many things by prayer, but sent them his doctrine. That uh, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. I mean, when you start walking with God, you start putting seeds in the ground. Amen. He said, you know, and when you pay your tithes according to Malachi, he promises to rebuke the devourer. How many of the devourer is showing up here? Amen. Mark 4 5, he said, some fell on stony ground. For it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. You know, some people, they just start throwing it out there, and people think they're doing good because it springs right up, but it has no depth because their hearts were hard. They didn't let God work on them. Come on, are you hearing me this morning? But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. When the heat got turned up, they had no roots. Come on. We're living in the last days The heat's going to get turned up. How many want to keep their joy when the heat gets turned up? So that means you're going to have to let Him work on you and let Him soften your heart and let Him into places you really don't want to let Him into. Yeah. He said, And then some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no fruit. Thorns are cares. We're going to prove that in another verse on down. Thorns are cares. When the cares come, they'll choke it. And then that fruit that you were so expecting, that you had your faith so attached to, doesn't come because you let the cares choke it where it had no place to go. Anybody ever seen a garden get taken over by a briar patch? All that good food, it, could, it was coming up, it was looking beautiful. But I promise you, by the time that briar patch, if it, nobody maintains it and doesn't cut it back, there won't be no fruit in that whole garden. There will be nothing but thorns. Cares are that way. They will eat your lunch and keep eating, and you will have no lunch left to, to you stand on. They will overcome where you can't find the truth anywhere in their mess. You'll have to go and get some crazy faith friends to break you out of there. And dig up the fallow ground and sow some more seeds for you. Amen. Another fell on, let, let's look at this one. Another fell on good ground and did yield fruit and sprang up, uh, digging us about this morning, and increased fruit and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. When you sow into the kingdom of God, He don't do math like you and me. Hallelujah. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, it's not a one for one. It's not a give and take. You know, when I was out in the world and in the in the biker community and other things, there was brotherhoods. Don't listen. The enemy always has some kind of fake thing that tries to emulate how the kingdom of God is supposed to be. But if I did for you, I expected you to do for me when my phone when I rang the phone. And if you didn't, you were dead to me. Anybody familiar with that thing? Yeah. I mean, when we do something as believers, we don't give to get and we don't expect nothing back. We do it because it's the right thing to do and we love people. Amen. You know where we learned that from? A guy named Jesus. Amen. Right? Yeah. And so, but Jesus, we don't give to get. Come on, we do it. 
because it's the right thing to do. And then he says, all right, 30, 60, 100 fold. How many of a 30 fold increase on whatever you sow is pretty good? How many would like to start seeing those kind of harvests in your life? Then maybe we need to start dealing a little more effectively with the cares we've been letting in. Ooh, he preaching now. Because cares will choke your seed and kill it. We just read it in Scripture. Well, I can't help it, preacher. I just get alone and think about things. Well, stop it. Meditate on the Word. Realize what you're doing and start speaking the truth over it. So it's like giving fertilizer to the Word of God. Fertilizer to the promises of God. You use the Word to give fertilizer to the promise. That'll preach. I'm fertilizing the word. The promise. Key verse, Mark 4, 13. Well, i got to finish the other one. He said in them, verse 9, He said in them, He that had ears to hear, let him hear. This morning, you can either tune me out and say, I wish he would hurry and get up over with. He's just sitting on the pulpit again anyways. Or you can say, I'm going to hear what he's saying. I'm going to realize that I can have what God says I can have. I can be who God says I can be. But I'm going to have to start dealing with these cares that have been choking the life right out of me. Amen. And when I start doing that, I need to find the truth of God's Word and start planting that and sowing that into the ground and expecting a harvest. Listen, I've had a lot of cares. My, my physical body, my things I've went through and that. And I don't always... You know, I wish that, you know, after it's been a, a tremendous amount of time. I wish that I always got it right 100% of the times, but I don't. But I am quick to repent. Get it under the blood. And keep pressing on and putting the right seed in the ground. And if you're here this morning and you're under, I'm going to tell you, there's some good stuff coming at the end of this. But you have to decide. Am I willing to give up the cares? You know, some people in the enemy will say, well, you know you're right. Man, you can be 100% right and still be 100% wrong. Yes, you may have a right to feel that way, but is your feelings worth the promises of God actually working in your life? Boy, he's preaching this morning. Key verse, Mark 4, 13. Mark 4, it's not, this ain't the key verse, but this is the key part of the chapter. Mark 4, we're going to jump down to verse 13. And he said, Know you not that this parable, and how then you will know all parables, the sower soweth what? The word. The word. Come on, we see it. So what are we sowing? The word. The word. Is God bound by anything else? No, he's not. He's bound by his word. His word is a living contract with you and me. If he wrote it, he said it, he breathed it into life, and he will do it. Yeah. I've never seen the righteous forsaken and his seed begging for bread. What makes you think you're going to be the first one? But he don't always do it the way you think he's going to do things, and then the enemy will come along and twist and pervert it and bring his cares along and try to sit it on your shoulder, and then if you'll let, if you'll let it, it will choke the life, and then the very word that you've sown, it will choke it right up out of you. You have to make up your mind this morning that the word is true, you're going to do what the word says, you're going to live it out, and you're not going to turn your head to the left or right, you're not going to go back to the leeks and garlics like the Egyptians. When you put your hand to the plow, you're going to hold it there. So the sower soweth the word. What do you need to start putting in the ground today? The word. the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. So will it say as soon as you get to your right now, there's some of you every Sunday you come and you hear the word of God, and then Satan comes along and twists and perverts your mind, and it gets stolen before it ever gets in the ground. But today you can say, I'm on to you, stupid. 
I see where I need to make some changes. I'm going to let go of these cares and I'm going to hold on to the truth and the word and I'm going to keep putting them in the ground until I see them come to fruition. It's seed time harvest. You know, God is not a microwave God. And a lot of times, He's working stuff out that you can't see and most of the time, it's in you and me. Big smile. <laughs> Verse 16, And these are likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have had the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Well, Pastor, they came to church for a little while. I really thought they were doing good, and then they were gone. Well, that's because when it came down to God really working on their heart, they said, no, nope, not doing it. Stop right there. And then the heat got turned up and they said, well, this, I thought it was all roses and just all happy stuff with Jesus. This stinks. I'll just go back to the way it was. And then seven more demons came and got them and they were worshiping what they was. They showed up in church and now they're off living in hell. And now we've got to pray them back out of that mess so they'll get back in here. Come on, I'm preaching straight this morning. When affliction or persecution arise for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Well, I didn't think this is what it was going to be like when I took a stand for Jesus. What do you mean not everybody likes me? Now, I'm not talking about being religious because we're going to get that in a minute. I mean, if you've not been around BCC long enough, most yet, I mean, there's a big difference between being religious and loving Jesus and having a relationship with Him. Amen. Religion will kill you. Mm -hmm. yes. It'll choke the life out of you. And do you know one way that people get religious? I'm going to tell you, it's coming up in the sermon. They let the cares of this life choke the truth out of the Word. And it starts making legalism come back alive. And they start putting themselves back under the law. Ooh, that's deep. You think about it for a little bit. So immediately they are offended. Mark 4 18. Here we go. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches and lust of other things entering in. Choke the word and it become unfruitful. These were once believers that had fruit in their life. But let the cares, some of them deceitfulness and lust, and other things there. But it chokes the word. Cares can choke the word. God didn't make you to bear all that weight. His yoke is easy, his burden is light. But you have to choose to cast your cares upon Him. Amen? Here's the good news. Verse 20. And these which are sown on good ground, such as hear the Word. I mean, a lot of people hear the Word. But then there's the ones that receive the Word. But you didn't stop there. There's the ones that cast off that cares and bring forth fruit. How many know the world needs to see people bringing forth fruit? Amen. Signs, wonders, miracles, come on. He said some 30 fold, some 60, and some 100. Did he say a little dab of duty? He said no. I want them out there being a walking billboard of the goodness of God. Well, how can they smile when they've got all that going on? Is he just fake? No, because it's real. Because I've got Jesus in me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Come on. So, I'm going to continue on. What about when you've been letting the cares choke the life out of you? Do you know something you start doing? You start offending others because you stop getting the wrong heart. You stop having the right heart and you start getting the wrong heart. Because you're too worried about all your cares. But you don't keep yourself in check. 
Matthew 18, 15. Matthew 18, 15 says, More of thy brother shall trespass against thee. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thou hast gained thy brother. Now does this mean I go assault the guy? Do you know what you did to me? Well, I didn't do it like that, Pastor. Yeah, but that was what was in your heart the whole time you were talking. The Bible says we're to you know, love people as Christ loved the church. He laid out his life for us. Hey, man, I don't know if you realize this or not. I call it checking the slate sometimes. Some of you have been around. I've checked the slate with you. Sometimes you had stuff on it. Sometimes you didn't. But either way, I checked it. Trust me, if you're here very long, and if I think I've offended you, I'll usually say something, unless the Lord tells me not to, because He says, I'm still working on their heart, and they're not ready for you to talk to them yet. When they get their heart ready, I'll let you talk to them. I'm just telling, but guess what? If I, you know, if I've offended you or you've offended me, I want to go to you. Now, does that mean that I don't forgive you until you tell me you're sorry? No, it does not. It means I went and tried to repair it and then I'm giving it to God and now I'm walking it out in love. Because when I was offended with you, I picked up a care. And that care was choking the truth out of the Word and it was hindering me in every area of my life. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Amen. Now, when you start operating and the cares of the life start really coming on you, you start operating in the flesh. I hate to tell it to you. And when you're operating in the flesh, you get full blown into legalism and all the junk that comes with it. And the works of the flesh are just listed here in Galatians 5.19. And... Uh, so if you need to know if the cares of the world affected you so much that it's dealing with other things, Galatians 5.19 says, Now the works of flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery. If we have any adulterers in here, you need to repent. Uh, but you know how people fall into adultery? The cares of this world started choking the life out of them to the point they started looking for release and satisfaction in some other place other than the Word of God. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Yeah. It never starts with the act. It started somewhere with the seed long before. Right? Yes. Fornication. Nobody just slipped and fell. It started with the seed way before. Uncleanliness. Having stuff in your life that's not right from God. Way before that happened, the, there was cares that the enemy had placed on you and started choking the Word of God and the truth out of you that allowed that to come into your life. Lasciviousness. That means being perverted <laughs> in any kind of area. Just breaking it down real simple this morning. Before that thing took over you and owned you, there were thoughts that made you feel like you deserved something better than what you had. That you started looking for something elsewhere instead of giving that to God and letting Him heal you. Verse 20, adultery. Witchcraft, which is also rebellion. Adultery is having anything before God. I like my football preacher. I ain't coming to church on Sundays. Well, that football just became adultery. I'm not trying to... That's why they get record now. I know it's not the same. Listen, is watching football going to send you to hell? No, but it was something that the world knows all over that I could use as an illustration. I'm not trying to pick on anybody. It could have been NASCAR. It could have been anything. It could be your family. And I'm a big family man and about ministry. So I mean, no, God comes first. Yes. Hatred. I don't like them. Listen, you got to love them, not tolerate them. Regardless who they are and what they've done and what they're doing. Regardless of what 
sin they're doing. You hate the sin, never the person. Come on. Variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedations, heresies. I'm going to go on. Envies, murders, drunkenness. Drunkenness. Jesus made wine in the water. It took a 55 gallon drum of that wine and got the buzz. Don't be giving me that stuff. He said, Do not drink the king's wine. There's a difference between the regular wine and king's wine. So quit trying to justify it. If God wants you to have a party, he wouldn't have said drunkards don't make heaven. Why is he going to make a way for something and tell you ain't going to get to heaven for another one? The Word of God never contradicts itself. But do you know why people, back to this, do you know why people drink? Usually, some people say, I'm just a social drinker, I like to have fun. Because there were cares of the world somewhere that started waiting for them or were waiting on them, and they started looking for a way of escape. Instead of going to the truth of the Word of God and getting free from that thing and getting the only help that's going to satisfy. Amen. Same way with drugs. Come on, I'm preaching. Same way with sex. Come on, we're adults. You're looking. Same way with pornography. Same way. It, it's looking for a way of escape because the cares of the world got so much that you said, I just can't stand it no more. The same way some people are, oh my goodness, heaven has us on shopping addiction. <laughs> the cares of this world. And sometimes they're genuine cares. Sometimes there's nothing sinful about them. But if you're not, and you don't give, if you're not careful and you don't give them to God, they will lead into some of these type of things. Do you see what I'm saying this morning? Because he says, Reverend, to such a like which I tell you as I've told you in time past, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Strong words, isn't it? The preacher, there ain't no way I can live like that. I might as well just quit trying. Welcome, the devil just got his first bit of twisted tr junk in you and you just let the cares of this world steal you from the only thing that was going to give you joy and peace in this broken time. Because you're right, you can't do it. If you could have done it, you would have already done it. That's why you need Jesus. That's why you need help. In your, in your weakness, His strength is made perfect. But you've got to go to the Word and sow the Word to start reaping the Word to break that thing up and out of it. Amen. Come on. Yeah. I'm going to surprise a bunch of you here in a minute. Just hold on. Mm -hmm. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. See, this is what the people have been saying that has so impacted and shocked the community. I mean, each one of these things are an action. There's something you can't fake. There's something you have to do. Long-suffering. If you've not been out there yet, then you don't know what that word really means. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Meekness. That means, meekness means when you know what they deserve and you know what you want to tell them, but you choose to act like Jesus anyways. Come on. Temperance. Praise God, they didn't know me 25 years ago. They wouldn't still be standing there. I'm tempered now. Hard as steel. You ain't going to fix me. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Against such there is no law. Because when you let the cares of this world affect you, come on, it is no law. There is no law. Because when you let the cares of this world affect you, you're back under the law and you start operating in the works of the flesh. And if you don't get it taken care of, they start growing exponentially. Anybody getting anything this morning? Yes. And the first thing they will take is your peace and joy. 
That's the first thing when you're not sowing or doing the right thing that it will take is your peace and joy. But you know what? I'm right. I'm going to bless God. Now you don't know what they did to me, preacher. You know what? I don't know. Well, you don't know what I'm facing. You know what the doctor said? No, I don't know. But I know what the Word of God says. Well, I have you so and so, and they stood in faith and they died. Well, they in heaven yet. Well, they made it. They're in They're in it. They're living it. They're, in, they're, they're doing their best life now. And if you want to see them again, you're going to, they didn't let the cares of this world choke them out. Most people that died, I never seen anybody that died standing in faith that didn't leave this world happy. Right. They had a smile on their face. And I've seen people that choose to refuse to live right and they were in agony. It was They were almost screaming, almost like the demon showed up to come and get them. And there was just such a sadness and darkness in the room. And then the whole family just felt that way and fell in. How you handle your cares matter. You're going to have them. I wish we could give you some secret potion that says, I'm a child of God. I'm immune to the cares of the world. But you're not. That's why he said, cast your cares upon him. But every What's that? We were taught a long time in the church to act like we didn't have cares. Because if you had cares, you weren't a good enough little Christian. Right. Right. You're going to have cares. They're going to affect you. And you've got to realize when they're starting to, so you can start casting them back to the Lord and standing in faith so that they don't start operating back under the law and then have to repent because you got a little... You know, Come on. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. That means i got to physically nail my hide to the wall every day and say, listen, buddy, you're not going to live that way. You're not going to act that way. I'm going to be a child of the Most High God. And if you're going to act up, you ain't getting no food. I'm going to, it's getting nothing but the Word of God. I'm going to fast and pray until you get back in alignment because I'll let you have a little bit too much freedom. <laughs> Come on. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. We know we have a ministry called Spirit Riders. People are like, well, I think you should preach more. Spirit Riders is all about taking the Spirit of God riding with motorcycles till they affect it. The Bible says we anoint it breaks the yoke. Do you know how people I've ministered to out here yesterday? In like the 16 hours I was here? That didn't even know they were being ministered to? I laughed. I told somebody, they haven't known that. Come on, look at me now. I don't I don't dress this way trying to be somebody. I, you've all seen me in a three-piece suit and clean shaved, and you know, but this is who I used to be. And you know, they don't have a clue I'm pastor. I'll be probably the last guy they would suspect in my big old pumpkin orange shirt. But I got to love on them. I got to use the anointing on them, whether they know it or not. To the point they were responding. Are you seeing what I'm saying? But listen, I, I have a ton of cares. As pastor, you guys have no idea what I deal with and all the stuff I deal with praying for you. But if I ever start picking them up, they affect me in a negative connotation too. And it's not that I don't never, it's just I've learned to drop them quicker. Come on, are you with me? Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Quit looking to get glory from stuff and just do it for Jesus. Amen. Provoking one another, envying one another, it ain't a competition. We're just all trying to be lovers of Jesus. You know, it is the BCC family. I've worked hard in no clicks in case you haven't noticed. It's not, you know, that's not unintentional. It's very intentional. Because clicks kill people. People need to feel like when they come here, if they choose to come here, that they're part of us. That they're part of this family. Because we all need family. Amen. 
In the world we live in, we need to feel like we're loved, right? <laughs> but how many today showed up with uh, some cares that you would like to get rid of? Yeah, we're going to do that in just a minute. So, back to what I've already stated. The more flesh that we operate in, the more legalism we operate under. You want to know why some religious people are that way? Because they've got all the stuff jacked up and you can just tell. they got a lot of flesh they need to deal with. Now, do we say, well, look at those legalistic. They're operating in the flesh. No, I guess it matters. They're hurting. There is something somewhere, some care that choked the life out of them that they need to let Jesus in to heal. And I need to pray and intercede for them. Because there's something in them broken. Come on, do you hear me this morning? Yes. Because see, when you operate, because the, the Bible says those who have been forgiven much love much. Maybe that's what makes, I, hopefully you all think I am, but I'm not looking for that voice, but I think that's one of the things that makes me a good pastor is where I came from. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm going to tell you, there's nothing you can do that's going to make me stop loving you. Although some of you have tried. <laughs> but I think I proved my point uh, not that I won't correct you not that I won't tell you what needs to be said if it comes to that point but I'm never going to stop loving you and there's some of you that I've seen you know it, it's heartbreaking when the cares of this world turn people so hearted to hard hearted they stop leading fruit because eventually what happens they die and then they break away from the body Right? Yes. But I refuse to just let anybody go. I'll keep praying for you regardless. Just because you leave here doesn't mean you get off the hit list. I promise you that. Amen. If anything, it gets you stepped up on. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to church there no more. I'm tired of the way he's preaching and talking to me. Okay, but I'm... You, if God brought you here, I'm going to keep praying for you until you come to the very thing He does or the enemy completely takes you out. One of the two things are going to happen. I, my desire is to see this church so full of people on fire for God that we're a living, burning testimony to the goodness of God in Amen. Amen. But we all deal with things. Right? Let me get through this and then I'll get to my message. I got five minutes to preach it. <laughs> there always. God will provide one way or the other. We, we did pretty good yesterday. I think I parked 140, 50 cars yesterday. So, I think we can pay one of our bills, which I'm about to get to today. The cares of this world will steal the Zoe kind of life which steals your Zoe, your joy. And Zoe, and Zoe comes from abundant, which is John 10.10. 10. So when you let the, the cares come in, it is steal that very thing that Jesus paid such a high price for. You all hear my heart this morning? How many are ready to get back into that Zoe kind of life? You know, when you laugh at the devil like this, ha, 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 you stupid idiot. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. Woo! You know, it makes you want to swing out over hell with cornstalk and spit in the devil's eye. You're not getting my family. You're not getting my spouse. You're not getting my, you're not getting my house. Well, if you take my house, God's got a better one. I am serving God, and if he's for me, who can be against me? But it doesn't always go that way. He is really good at wearing down the saints. He won't always come at you with a giant problem. He'll usually come at you with a compound of three trillion problems. And you'll slowly be like a lobster boiling alive in the cares of this world until you start realizing, hey, I'm disconnected from the peace. I'm disconnected from the joy. And something's got to give. Where's Sunday? But I want to encourage you, it can be Sunday every day. Yeah. One of the verses I've been quoting, 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. The first truth you have to believe 
is that Jesus loves you and He truly does care about you. And He has your best interest at heart. If you can't believe that, you're going to struggle with all the rest. And if you start and start thinking about the lies that he's been telling you, each one of those is contrary to that very simple statement. Come on. John 10.10 10, The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. And so many concentrate and put all their energy thinking about what the thief is doing. Why should we care what a thief is doing? A thief is trying to do something. He's not saying he's done anything. We know what he's coming for. We didn't say what he's coming to, what he's already got. He's coming to try to steal. He's coming to try to kill. He's coming to try to destroy. He brings sickness. He brings troubles. He brings strife. He brings all those things because He can't make you do anything. You have the authority that Jesus gave you that, that causes you to trample on serpents and, and, and do all kinds of phenomenal signs and wonders, but He wants to get you so weighted down that you open up the flesh door again, walk in legalism, and cut you off from all the power that comes as a believer. He said, I've come that you might have life and might have it more abundantly. Zoe, joy kind of life. Woo! Ha, ha, ha! 